Hello and welcome back. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I'm Maddie and today I have got another puzzle haul for us. Only this one's a little bit different to the ones I've previously done as all these puzzles, none of them come from Amazon or puzzle stores or not even bought second hand from people. These are all from charity shops. Now, I'm a big lover of charity shops for a few reasons. One, when you go in, you have no idea what you're going to find. It's quite exciting and like quite a thrill when you do find the puzzle you really want. Secondly, your money's going to a good cause and you're saving money. So I see that as like a win-win situation. The only downfall is, as with any secondhand puzzle, is it is more of a risk that the puzzle could have a missing piece. However, there are a few things I look out for when buying puzzles from charity shops and I will share those tips with you in the video. Okay, let's move on to taking a look at the puzzles. First up, I have these two. They are the Blockbuster puzzles. I have got E.T. and Beetlejuice. They are both 500 piece puzzles. They come in these kind of funky pretend VHS cases, which I really like. Three of the sides are all transparent, so I can see in and see what the puzzle pieces look like. I can see a mix of shapes in there. On the back it has spinmaster.com. I'm guessing that's who they're made by. I haven't done any puzzles by them before, so that'll be a bit different. E.T. is one of those movies I saw so many times as a kid, and you know, E.T. himself, he actually really quite scared me and kind of still does a little bit. As for Beetlejuice, well, that's just a classic, a lot of fun. I do still enjoy this movie very much. It's like one I've got to watch around Halloween time. As for VHS videos, I'm old enough to remember those very well. And Blockbuster, that used to be a big thing. Like as an older kid, about 9, 10, 11, I guess. We used to go to Blockbuster at a weekend on a Friday after school. I used to get to choose what video I wanted and we'd hire it for the weekend. And how devastated I would be if I would get there and find the one I wanted someone else had already hired. I think when I puzzle these, I'm gonna have to put the movie on in the background while I'm puzzling away. I think that'll definitely create the right atmosphere and really get me into the puzzle. Okay. Let's move on to my second, or I should say third puzzle. Let's go this way to Ravensburger. The puzzle image is one of Lowry's very famous works. It is called Coming From The Mill and he did that piece of art in 1930. The puzzle itself is obviously much more modern. The puzzle is from 2017 and whoever had this puzzle, they have kept the box in immaculate condition it looks brand new and that is something I definitely look out for when I am buying puzzles from charity shops you know if people respect their puzzles and look after the box and things I find them much more likely to have been careful with the pieces and puzzle itself the puzzle artwork is obviously very beautiful let's move that away a little bit so you can see However, it does look like it's going to be a challenging one and that's probably what initially put me off getting it but my other half, he fell in love with this puzzle image so it was like, okay, we'll get it but you're definitely going to help me. We'll just have a quick look inside the box. So there we go. So whoever had this puzzle, how good is that? They it looks like practically new. In fact, I can't even see where they opened it. Ah, there we go. They opened it there and sellotaped it back up with some sellotape. And they have also, oh, that's the edge pieces. They put the edge pieces kindly in a separate little bag. I know I see like online some people hate that when people do that, but I don't mind. I will, when I go to do this, like just mix them back in. And it, oh, it comes with a very nice little leaflet. So that just tells us a little bit of information about the artist and the picture. 
I'm not going to read through it properly now because I'm going to like save that for when I do the puzzle. So that kind of like takes me to another tip actually. When getting a second hand puzzle, if the people, person who previously had it has made the effort to bag the puzzle back up rather than leaving the pieces just loose, I find that to be like a really good you know, indication again that the puzzle is looked after and all the pieces are there. And it also helps in the sense that when it goes to the charity shop, if the pieces are loose in the box, there's much more risk, I think, that pieces could have accidentally fallen out the box in transit or when they're sitting in the charity shop back room before it goes out or when it's on the shop floor. You know, you pick boxes up, don't you? Mm -hmm. And have a look, move them around. If there's pieces loose in there, especially if the lid is like not that tight, it must be so easy for them to fall out. Okay, on to the next. And we have a Cloudberries puzzle. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Look at the state of that box. That goes against what you said a minute ago about making sure the puzzle box looks good. However, I have a confession. That's totally my fault. When I bought this puzzle, the box was immaculate. So I went to the shop, I bought it, I had a bag with me and everything, put it in, went out. On my way home, the heavens just opened and a huge downpour of rain came. And it's one of those downpours that absolutely soaks you everything. It's like when I got in, my jeans were stuck to me, even though you have your hood up, your hair's totally soaking wet. And yeah, obviously in its carry bag, this was drenched. But thankfully I have checked and inside the puzzle pieces still seem to be all fine. So that's the main thing. And so this puzzle, I've obviously left the sellotape, well, put it back on which is another tip in charity shops if you're buying a second hand puzzle i think it's a really good thing if they have sellotaped the box the lid closed so other people have not just been opening and closing it especially if the pieces are loose and again more risk of a missing piece okay next puzzle we have got a little puzzle from otter house this one is a thousand pieces. As I should have mentioned, the last two were, the Ravensburger and Cloudberries were all a thousand pieces too. So this is Otter House, which is a brand I really like. They come in these kind of like nice, neat, simple little boxes. This particular puzzle, it's actually a square puzzle, which is, I think, what may have appealed to me as you know, it's just nice to have a change from the sort of like rectangular puzzles we normally do. However, like in hindsight, it is like a little bit too chocolate box for my normal taste, but I don't know, it is quite sweet. I think in the summer, on a nice summer's evening, I can still probably see myself doing this one, but I'll definitely probably save it until then. I will just take the cello tape off because again this one was taped down nicely and have a little look inside because Otter House normally come with nice puzzle posters so I check that the puzzle poster is still there oh again this puzzle someone has kindly packaged back in the bag always good And their nice little printouts. Now that's one thing I like about Otter House. When they do put a poster in, they don't put like a huge one in. So if you want to have a look at it for reference, it's like a nice size that you can just put to the side and look at if you want to. It is actually quite a sweet picture. I think it's the cat fast asleep down there that appeals to me on this one. And it's from obviously a paintings and the brush strokes on this one. I can see that potentially making it a little bit more challenging, but not overly challenging. There's a nice variety of different colours there too. So yeah, that would be a nice one for the summer. The next one is a very different style to that one. We have got the Dragon Chronicles. Now this puzzle, 
I am slightly worried about. The box isn't in too bad condition, but if we look at the back, there is a bit of a gap and it wasn't sellotaped. And inside, I can just like, whoever had it, they put it in a bag or didn't well, put the pieces back in the bag, but didn't like tape it up or not properly. I don't know if it's like maybe gone through two people in the past. So they are loose. So I'm a little bit nervous. This one could have a missing piece, but hopefully not. I do really like my fantasy puzzles and fantasy genre. So that's what appealed with this one to me. And I can see it being really quite a challenging puzzle. It is so blue. There's a lot, a lot of blue there and similar tones and all the rock but i do really like the image there's a couple of other titles available however this puzzle i think is a bit older i can see like the copyright at the bottom talks about 2008. i do have a real soft spot for dragons and for castles this puzzle has both so to me what's not to like in the puzzle we can also see this like invading army down here. I'm guessing there's some ships over here, so they've come from that. They look like they're going to go and try to take over and capture the castle. And the dragon's up there firing down on them, protecting his castle. I'm looking forward to this one. Let's have a quick look at the pieces. They look like they're going to be quite shiny and have a plain back. They don't feel that strong or thick. Oh. Hey ho, we'll see. Next one is a bit of nostalgia for me, a Puzz 3D puzzle. Now I had one of these as a kid. I think Father Christmas gave it to me actually. Very kind of him. So I saw this one and well, I've still left the price on there. One pound, bargain. So I thought for a pound, why not? Have a bit of a, a flashback to the past. It wasn't this one I had as a kid. I think it was more like a Tudor house or something along those lines. But this looks really nice and I've done a few 3D puzzles recently and I've got a few more to do so it'll be quite nice to kind of compare what if there's like much difference over time in them. So that's the back just here age 12 plus. They're foam backed pieces. I don't know how large this one is going to be, but yeah, I think that's going to be a bit of fun at some point. There's like a lot of detail we can see there. It looks pretty impressive. How many pieces? Oh, it's only 220 pieces, so that can't be too difficult, right? Okay, actually, let's just have a quick look inside. Oh, so it's sellotape, but oh dear, the sellotape's ripping my box. I guess the sellotape might have been on it for a very long time. Okay, really, wow, they sellotaped it in every direction. Can my nails get through this? No, I'm going to have to get some scissors. Be right back. I should have used scissors at the beginning and not ripped the box there. Never mind. Okay. Oh, here we go. So, has some card too. And oh well. Yeah, they still look in pretty good nick. The pieces here. They kindly put some of them, I guess that's the smaller ones. Wow, there's some like really, really teeny pieces in there in a little bag. I wonder when this puzzle is actually from. Let's have a look. 1997. Copyright Rabbit. Now, I've got a new Rabbit puzzle, Camelot, which yeah, I'm going to be doing real soon. I've had it for a while actually, just haven't got around to it. So it will actually be really interesting maybe if I do this one first and then the new rabbit one and like compare it. Okay, 
Next one, this next one I'm really excited about. This is Ibu. How beautiful and colourful is that design? I love it. What a find in a charity shop. 1,000 pieces again. This one is called Birds in Fern. And at the back it's got copyright 2020. So this is, you know, quite a new puzzle. Whoever had this must have bought it, puzzled it and donated it pretty much straight away. And it's like the box and everything is in perfect condition. Now I have never actually done an Ibu puzzle, but I've heard so much about them. It's just, I don't know, I just haven't got around to getting one and doing one. So I am so excited to have this and to do it and like I was like wow when I saw it in a shop it was like grabbed it and literally ran to the till so inside it comes with a picture of our puzzle now I do have to admit I think this puzzle is going to be pretty challenging but it is so beautiful and I think when it's complete it's going to be like so satisfying to have it done so the pieces are really thick and really shiny. I tend to go more for matte puzzles just because I tend to puzzle of an evening once I've got the kids and things to bed so you know I have like light shining down to help me see and yeah like shiny and lights there's a lot of glare but, so, but maybe I can set aside like a sneaky afternoon or something to do this one. Colours. I just love the colours in this puzzle. The greens, pinks, blues, purples. Yeah, this one is pretty high on my to-do list, definitely. Now onto another colourful puzzle. This one is by Grafica. Grafica? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Anyway, so this one, it's a 1500 piece puzzle. It's the largest um, piece count puzzle in this collection because that's another point I would say with like the charity shop puzzles I never normally go beyond a thousand pieces uh, buying in a charity shop because of that you know slight risk of missing pieces if you know you don't want to do like a five thousand or a three thousand puzzle put all those hours into it and find a couple of missing pieces but yeah but this one well I just saw it and loved it and the box is perfect so you know i took a ch i've taken a chance but i feel pretty confident and i just love the design the pattern the colors there i think it just looks fantastic and i have had a look inside already i say and whoever had it have put it back in the bag in a ziploc bag so that is a very promising thing and inside it's all clean the pieces look perfect even just looking at the pieces they look so colorful and vivid i am yeah really looking forward to this one too you can see they're really strong and thick i have done puzzles by this brand before and they're really good quality the back of the box shows some of the other ranges from the brand and you know it's quite varied from like you know animals to the art collection to like fantasy designs there's quite a few there i will definitely have to try and look out for them get them uh, brand new as well yeah i need to stop looking at all those puzzles there because i've already seen about four or five at least i want So this one is a portrait puzzle rather than landscape. And what I didn't think about when I got it is because it's a bit larger, it's 1500 piece. My lovely little puzzle table, it is too large for me to be able to sit here and puzzle it that way. So I'm going to have to, when I, yeah, I'm going to have to like puzzle it the wrong way. Thankfully, as it's kind of, you know, quite a modern design, well, very modern sort of design. I don't think it'll look too bad that way either. I think it'll still look really nice. So this is one you could puzzle portrait or landscape. Okay, 
on to our last puzzle now and this one is the puzzle shop this puzzle is by corner piece puzzles now um, they're in the UK I'm not sure if they're in the US at all but they're quite a budget brand so they're not one that I would normally buy secondhand uh, from a charity shop because you can buy a 500 piece puzzle for about five pounds from this company I think I paid about two pounds for this one charity shop but the fact it was the puzzle shop I had to have a puzzle of the puzzle shop right <laughs> you can see the artwork on this one it's definitely you know computer generated but I guess just the theme the concept of a puzzle of the puzzle shop won me over Let's have a little look inside. It is taped up. I've never, since getting this, checked what it's like inside. Okay, so the pieces I can see instantly. They look they look fairly small, but it is only five. Not small, small. Not tiny, small. Just like a bit smaller than standard puzzle pieces. They have a sheen to them. They're all printed with like the corner piece I can see on the back there. Yeah they look pretty decent. You can see mm, a couple of pieces have got slight, slightly peeling. It's second hands. Feel quite strong now and I am looking forward to puzzling the puzzle shop. If when you are looking in a charity shop at puzzles, and they are sellotaped, but you would kind of prefer the puzzle to be packaged inside in, you know, a plastic bag. When you move the box around, you can hear the pieces falling. So you know that the puzzle inside is loose. So the ideal situation would be in a charity shop for me is the puzzle is sellotaped and you can hear that inside the box it is in some sort of like plastic bag the prices in charity shops really vary from place to place shop to shop with these puzzles that i've bought my 500 piece puzzles cost me i think between two and three pounds these ones um Overall, I tend to see them in charity shops between two and four pounds. With the 1,000 piece puzzles, I generally see them for anything between three and five pounds. Most of the puzzles I have here cost me between four and five pounds, the 1,000 piece puzzles, including, I think that one, my one, 1,500, sorry, piece puzzle was five pounds. So, you know, overall, all these puzzles, if I bought them brand new, would have cost a lot of money. And getting them from a charity shop is like, it's probably about a quarter, a third of what I would have paid for them otherwise. There is a higher risk of puzzles having a missing piece when you buy them second hand, whether that be from a person or a charity shop. So I am curious what your experiences of secondhand puzzles are, whether they've been good, bad, or if you would buy puzzles from charity shops and secondhand, let me know in the comment section just under the video. And I think, well, I've actually got to go on the school run in a minute, so I think it's time for me to wrap these up and put them away and say thank you very much for watching today. Please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take care and happy puzzling.